Welcome back, YouTube. Sean here. Congratulations on making it to episode four. Um, so, short recap. Up until this point, we have um, added a third bumper to our bolt. We did a PRV delete. And we did the most basic version 1.0 of the bypass. And we also discovered the importance of the tools we use to tune our markers, our measuring tools, um, our output pressure gauge and our chronograph. So last video, I discovered that I was not shooting with 800 PSI like I had previously uh, thought and well, upon measuring it, I made the corrections and uh, hopefully you hung in there for that because you know, the numbers could may have been perceived as disappointing and, and to be honest, <laughs> they were, but I just, I, 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 I struggled through it because I, that's just what I do. I mean, when, I, when the videos are going, when I'm making this, um, there isn't a lot of time. I can't just decide that I'm not gonna continue at the, at the point that I was already at uh, in the series. So uh, moving forward, we are going to use my adjustable uh, regulator just because, now I have some other bottles that are 800, but where I left off in that last testing, I used this bottle, this regulator set to 800. So to keep things uh, on par, we're just gonna continue with this. So I have my regulator preset to 800. This is a full bottle. And we are gonna test my two favorite barrels. Now I say two barrels, but I actually have three barrels, but they are two different bore sizes. So um, I shoot a lot of projectiles. I've tried a lot of projectiles and the two that I always um, favor are the Canada Hybrid 9.9 .9 gram uh, rye balls and the uh, Grimberg Jewel V2. I do have some HP 68s. I just haven't had as much luck with those. And in my opinion, is one jam is too many jams. I mean, if you needed it in a in a situation, and that one gem just happened to be the roll of the dice that time, well, I mean, you can come to your own conclusion there. So I stick to round ball. But my two favorite projectiles that I always come back to. Canada Rye Balls, 9.9 .9 gram, and the Jewel V2. So those two projectiles perform um, best in, well, I'll let you decide, but Canada Rye Balls are best bore matched to a 0 0.684 bore barrel. Um, <clears throat> The Grimberg A5 barrel is a point, sorry, 0 0.686. And this is the conundrum, guys, is the Grimberg barrel does excellent with both projectiles. So this is more or less a, I don't know, yeah, it's a choose your own adventure, guys, because the reality is, is the third barrel that I was talking about is a 684 as well, um, but it's a 14 inch barrel. And let me show you guys here. Bore matching is as important as length. Length adds velocity in most cases because you're adding um, what's called dwell time. Dwell time is, is the length of time the air is in the barrel and propelling the projectile. So when you run out of dwell time, your ball is going to slow in the barrel. Essentially is what's gonna happen. That's the long and the short of it. It gets really complicated and I won't get into that, but length does matter. 
bore does matter, bore size does matter. And these are some examples. So this is, Lapco measures their barrels, uh, including the flash hider. So it's kind of a misnomer. Um, this barrel is a 684 Big Shot Assault. 684 being the bore size. You can see it's smooth bore. Without the flash hider that you saw me just remove, it's about seven inches. I'm not left handed, damn it. <laughs> there you go, about seven inches. What is seven inches? But the kicker with this barrel is it has some cording on the end here. You can see right there. This is about an inch down from it. So that actually makes this barrel six inches. Because once in LL, once you reach that porting, we are looking for compression here, guys. And when the ball just gets past that uh, porting, you lose a whole lot of everything out of that porting. So we're just going to call this a six inch barrel. It's a little tight and you'll see it when I test this. Um, the Grimbergs, they slow down a little bit in this. They're, it's a little bit tight, but it still does perform well. The next is the Grimberg, actual Grimberg A5 threaded uh, barrel. This one is nine inches in, and as you can see, there's no porting in this whatsoever. So it has a good three inches on the Lapco. That is fairly significant in, in attaining um, higher feet per second. But more so, I don't like to, I don't like to modify things. Um, I like things to just work. I have a cutoff lab coat that I did myself. And I did it because they don't make, well, essentially I did it because this front half is useless. I mean, yeah, you gotta put your flash hider on or you can add a mock suppressor or what have you, but um, so I cut it off. Speaking with Kurt, they will cut your barrel off if so requested. Um, I don't know about custom lengths, so to speak, but uh, six inch Grimberg A5 is possible. They do come in, uh, in and out of stock. So it's something considered, but overall, I'm gonna put these in the marker and you can kind of view them and, and, and the last but not least is the 14 inch 684. Again, flash hider, less this porting that this barrel also has, which is, you notice the porting is, like it's got another extra half inch of porting. It doesn't really matter that much because the air is gone in that first half inch. There's two inches on that. So this is a 14 inch. So this is more like a 12 inch. Um, if I were to compare this to something like a VKS barrel is 12 inches. Um, 14 with a flash hider. It's the same sort of deal. And the, the, the VKS flash hider, pepper ball flash hider is a long SOB. Um, it's a little bit longer than this actually. So it's been a long time since I pulled the VKS out, but yeah, it's a 12 inch barrel. We'll just call it that. Um, this is gonna show gains over both of these barrels. But you see the issue. Now, some people don't like them this long. These two on the other end, I do love. These are my favorite barrels. Um, 
but I wanted to toss this one in there just to show you what can be had with a longer barrel, the difference moving up in length. Um, we will start, I'm gonna put the flash hider on this just on the lap coat just because it kind of looks pokey pokey without it. We'll thread it in my M17. We'll give you a look-see so you can see what it looks like. You know, because some, some people, this is about looks too, right? I mean, this marker, it looks pretty good, right? But with this short hand guard, if you got a barrel this long, you know, maybe not so much. And you know, I don't know, people are, people are particular. And I am, I am as well. So I can't, I can't argue with, you know, looks over function sometimes, as long as function is still in the realm of, well, in the realm of doing its job, guys. So there you go. That's what the eight inch Lapco looks like in the M17. I've already aired my marker. I showed you it, set at 800. You'll also notice cosmetically today I've changed. I'm not running the, the hybrid magazine and it's not because it malfunctioned, it's because I love these old school mil sig magazines. Like, doesn't that just look sweet? Um, trying to keep this video a little bit shorter than the last ones, guys. I already know, you already know from episode three, what the factory um, Falcon barrel did with the canter eyeballs and the jewels. They were 31, 30 and a half to 31 and a half respectfully between the two of them um, on this exact setup. 800, 800 real PSI uh, version one. Bypass, PRV delete, third bumper. So I'm not going to retest the factory barrel. I'm going to go, I have a, uh, what do I have in here? Six, I have six rounds of jewel in here on a full tank. I'm going to shoot two rounds with the eight inch slap coat. Then I will switch to the Grimberg. And then I will, and fire two rounds, of course, and then I'll switch to the longest of the two, and that is the 14-inch uh, lap coat. And then I will switch to can of rye balls and repeat. And we'll just keep it short. I'll toss the numbers in the bottom and uh, make your comments below. Tell me what you think. What do you like? What don't you like? Better suggestions. Okay, let's go. Uh, chronograph. Grimberg, Jewel V2, eight inch, six, eight, four. Um, Lapco, smooth bore, or big shot of salt smooth bore. 800 PSI. Three ten. Two nine six. So, well, crunching any numbers, I can tell. I mean, that's an improvement over the factory barrel. Of course, it was going to be. So we'll take the eight-inch slap quote. We'll put in the Grimberg a five nine-inch barrel. And then I'll give you a little look. See. I mean, it's a little bit longer, right? Again, not a deal breaker. Sometimes, you know, you have to weigh performance versus looks. And this is like right in between. I mean, I think if it was an inch longer, it'd probably look stupid, but uh, it's okay like that. And the numbers will speak for itself. So 310, 298, 
Let's see what this one does. Are you 12? Are you 04? Well, it wasn't uh, exactly the a bang I was hoping for, but it was a better number. The average was better based on the drop in between and that drop in between guys, it, it'll, it'll start to settle, it really will. Um, like I said, this marker is not broken in. Um, and let's just switch to the 40 inch. I guess in the end, this test, this demonstration is more about what you can achieve just by changing your barrel. I mean, a lot of people may not think a barrel is that large a deal, um, but it is. Uh, it can make quite a significant difference on the identical setup that I was shooting. I mean, already over the factory barrel, it was 286, I think, was the best shot in episode three on the factory barrel with, with an actual 800 PSI and the best shot on the eight inch Lapco was 310. I mean, the math will be in the bottom of the screen, but that's 96, 206. So it's like 24 feet per second faster, just, just with a barrel change. And then you go to the actual Grimberg barrel and that's 26. So, I mean, those are, those are significant increases when you're talking about upgrading your marker because there's nothing really ever sends us to the moon. You always just gotta inch your way up. Uh, but yeah, let's shoot the 14 inch now. 312 was the best on the Grimberg. 800 PSI output. What do we got left in here? Still got lots of air. It's the bottom gauge there. 2800 or so. Sorry. <laughs> I pulled an all nighter last night. Uh, we had a big storm roll through. Okay. 14 inch. Do you see what I mean? Didn't change nothing on this marker. 344 with an eight gram. This with a barrel. Again, it dropped fairly significantly. They're 22 FPS. If I had to guess, the 22 was probably the more realistic number there. Um, as this marker settles in, those numbers are gonna get closer to each other. You've seen my other videos, guys. Even with the bypass, this marker is very consistent, um, but it's not showing that right now. But the other videos don't lie. Uh, it will, it will come into its own, trust me. Um, so, pause the video. I'm gonna refill my tank and we're gonna load up uh, the 9.9 .9 gram and do the same thing. Rinse, repeat, 9.9 .9 gram hybrid can of rye balls. Starting with the Alapco Big Shot Assault 8 inch smooth bore. Confirm my output pressure. 800. Now, like I mentioned, the jewels were a little bit tight in this barrel. Um, so that could probably hurt the feet per second a little and, and the inconsistency. If they're tight, it creates some drag in the barrel. Um, the riot balls, on the other hand, love this barrel. So let's see what it does. Two rounds. Two seventy four. Two 
68. Eighth yawn. Man, switch. Uh oh, my tight neck. Little bugger in there tight. All right, 15 minutes later. Just kidding, guys. It wasn't that long. Um, <laughs> We'll put the Grimber A5 9 inch in here. 6864. 8 RBSI. 282. Two seventy. Last but not least, the 14 inch 684 Lopco. This barrel um, is more appropriately sized for the can of ride balls. Two more shots. That one really made a thud. 306. Two ninety-two. Now I'll say it again. The purpose of this exercise is not to show you. One projectile is better than another. Um, it's to show you that barrels make a difference. Um, and depending on the projectile you're shooting, that barrel can deviate a lot from what I've even just showed you here. I mean, there's some funky stuff out there, guys. And if you're making your own rounds, um, or you're buying some Chinese rounds, these barrels that I'm testing here or just demonstrated might not be the right ones. And, and whatever your end goal is, whatever you choose, your budget reflects that you can purchase is gonna be the best for you. I mean, the factory barrel doesn't do terrible. I mean, When you're comparing it to the to the shorter Lapco in, in the in the Grimberg, um, it's about twenty feet per second or so, and remember that's only at eight hundred psi, guys. Uh, I mean, a lot of you guys are sending eleven hundred through this. In the end, it's up to the end user to decide what their intended purpose, what their intended goal is, um, and then choose appropriately. I mean, do you like that look? If you like that look, then why not? Do you like that function? Yeah. You choose, you do you. Don't fall into the trap where you've got to, I don't know, meet the expectations of everybody else. I mean, honestly, guys, if, if you're using this to protect yourself or your homestead or your family, none of that matters. None of it matters. Uh, Episode five, I think we're going to do bypass version two. I think I need to put some more rounds to this to get that consistency up. Um, so we'll see how it does. Stay tuned.